After things like this happen, there are always people around who are going to take a look and tell you how you did. What you have on the screen here now is a report done by the Kennedy School at Harvard. And as all of us know, in Boston, people at Harvard are wicked smart. And so, we listen to what they say. We have a daughter-in-law at our house who is a student at Harvard Law School and Business School. Uh, and we look at her and we say, yep, smart. <clears throat> and when the Kennedy School did their study on why, why was Boston strong, they came away with two things. Number one was, above other, all others, was looking at what the Boston Athletic Association did in the areas that we control, a very, very high level of preparedness. People who had plans for lots of contingencies, but beyond that, a level of preparedness to deal with anything. The other thing they noticed was that in Boston, everyone owns the marathon. All those hundreds of thousands of people were prepared and engaged and did what they had to do. And we got some colorful commentary from other people as well. There's Adam Sandler. This came in a different example of engagement. Four days after the bombing, there was a, a chance to catch the killers. And the governor and the mayor of Boston went on and said, hey folks, if you live around Boston and you possibly can, please stay off the streets because we might be able to catch these guys. And what happened was nobody went anywhere. The streets were absolutely deserted. And they did catch these people. And the Sandler tweet, if you can't see it, says, Boston is probably the only major city that if you blank with them, they will shut down the whole city, stop everything, and find you. Which, of course, is exactly what happened. And it's times like that when you look back as leader and have to reflect, did, did we do our jobs? Did we prepare everybody? Are they as engaged as they have to be? Did we have not just a plan, but a level of preparedness that would work? Have I done everything I can so that people are able and ready to do what they can do. We listen to what uh, our football coach has to say from time to time to make sure that we do our job. We as leaders help others to do theirs because if there's one thing that I'm sure all of you know, and we all know, is that, that none of us can create greatness in anyone else. But if we do our job, we may help to enable it. And that may be the best thing we ever do. And when it's over, somebody's going to show up and tell you how you did. And you never know who it's going to be. And it could be somebody as dramatic as the President of the United States, which is a pretty memorable moment, although not as much as you might think. If you were to ask me, uh, hey, Tom, what did the President say to you? My answer would be, gee, gee, I don't know. It was too overwhelming. It was nice, it was supportive, I know that, but the words just sort of blew by. But, but I can tell you exactly what I said to him, which was, Mr. President, it is the privilege of a lifetime to lead this organization. And those people down the line who you just met in those yellow jackets, those volunteers, we had to give them new jackets this morning because the ones that they wore on Monday were too bloody. So if a day ever comes when you find yourselves facing that sort of crisis, I will join you in praying that you are surrounded by people like that. Thank you very much for your kind attention here this morning. Very much appreciated. It's a great privilege to talk to all of you.